One thing I'm not sure a lot of people know, I was actually surprised to see this because I didn't know this. Um, when you were at Washington, you got recruited pretty heavily to coach at Notre Dame, right? This is after mm -hmm. George O'Leary right. resigned. Right. And, uh, tell me that story. They, the president and the AD, Kevin White, came to your house? Yeah, Kevin White uh, and uh, Father Malloy uh, all came to my home. Uh, you know, I had left Colorado amidst some controversy. Uh, you know, I, I had never been approached by, I, I, that's not true, UCLA asked me to come back to UCLA after year one, but I, I felt, you know, Colorado had gone out, no pun intended, over their skis. Bill Marot was the <laughs> ski coach uh, to, to, to hire me at the age that I was. So I was going to stay at Colorado. Well, ultimately, Bill Marot leaves to go coach the U.S. ski team. So I'm kind of in a new uh, predicament in terms of my work relationship with the AD, Dick Tharp. Good guy, but he didn't hire me. So now I get asked to come to uh, Washington, and I take the job, and you know, I'm, everybody's thinking I'm this ingrate for, for leaving Colorado. Uh, and then Gary Barnett got mad because I was recruiting some of the kids that I had been recruiting, which every, almost every did does because those recruits call you. I want to come with you, coach. Anyway, the bottom line is it created some bad blood, and I didn't necessarily want to go through that again. You know, when, when Notre Dame Even came, for Notre Dame. Deep inside my heart, I kind of knew I should go to Notre Dame, but I didn't want to do it to my family. And I'll never forget Father Malloy and I standing outside my house. And I, I was very fortunate I had a house right on the lake in Washington. He said, you know, Rick, he's like a 6'4 guy. <laughs> you know, Rick, we don't have a lake like this in Notre Dame. And I said, I'm not, I wouldn't be going for the lake. I'd be going because it's Notre Dame. It was, it was a tough one to say no to, but... Uh, it was still exciting to be covered, uh, at least sought after by the great Notre Dame. The way that you left Washington, I know yeah. it was going to be a constant topic, so let's just get this out of the way. <laughs> because it actually bothered me a little bit in reading all the articles and reading the coverage, even in years since, where people say he lost his job because he, because he was in an NCAA tournament pool. And that's not really true. Well, well it is true. It, they, they couldn't say it that way. Uh, the problem at Washington was the NCAA basketball pool. Uh, and yet, there were a couple of memos circulated through our athletic department the year that I got there and the year that this actually took place that said you could be in a pool right. with uh, your friends, you just couldn't be in a pool at work. And I was basically with a bunch of golf buddies at what they call a Calcutta and they were auctioning off the teams for the tournament. I knew very little about college basketball because I'd just gotten done recruiting. And I've proven, by the way, that just because you know a lot about college basketball doesn't mean you could pick a bracket. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm not surprised that the you, guy who doesn't made, know anything wins you, the doggone pool. You made, you please made, go well, on. <laughs> I, I, was, I was there having fun. The, the draft was over, and then one of my buddies asked if I wanted to be on their team. I didn't even know who they'd selected. But uh, so I said, sure. And so I didn't have a, any money or a checkbook or anything. He just said, you owe me. So we ended up winning the thing. Well, uh, the next year he calls me, they're doing it again. And I felt kind of like you're in a poker game, you win a hand, you can't just up and leave. So I said, okay, I'll come again. House money. You know, and we, we ended up winning again. Lo and behold, somebody in this deal was emailing anonymously the NCAA saying that I'm gambling on college sports, which unfortunately <laughs> cost me my job. I, I got brought to uh, this hotel in Seattle to talk about recruiting, and I'm asked a couple of questions about recruiting, and all of a sudden they slide a picture across the table and ask if I know this guy, and I look at the picture, and I can't recognize it. it's an old grainy photo, and it turns out to be the guy who was the auctioneer at this, at this uh, Calcutta, and his name is Al Hodge. And I, I say, okay, that's Al. And they asked me if I knew him, yes. Had he ever been to my house, yes. Had he ever been to a Husky game, yes. Had he ever been on the sideline, yes. And I'm going, what the hell has Al done? <laughs> you know? And all of a sudden, there, you've been in this pool. And I go, wait a minute. So I said, they go, did you participate? I said, what does participate mean? Because now I'm feeling ambushed. And they said, did you bid on any teams? I said, no because I hadn't. And now I'm playing dodgeball because I want out of there because I don't know if I've done anything illegal. 
because this is all news to, new to me. Well, bottom line is, go back, tell them everything, and I'm fired the next morning. The University so of Washington it, fires me. But my impression was it was more not being fully transparent because that the University of Washington didn't want that memo released. Okay. They were hoping that, and that's why it happened so fast, they wanted me out because, and I showed them the memo, and that's when they had to have another reason for letting me go. And so now they're saying that I had not been truthful, uh, and yet, as it would later play out, after I had to go to court to prove it, it was the NCAA that wasn't truthful with me. And that's why there was a settlement check written. Uh, but, you know, what I learned from these situations is they're like, uh, they're bombs. They go off and everybody runs for cover. And the truth of the matter is there's a lot of good people involved. And if everybody would come and just share rather than trying to dig a grave for one another, you could get these things solved a lot faster. But because of the media spotlight, it ends up becoming a firestorm that hardly anybody survives. Myself, the athletic director left, uh, the president was gone, there was a number of people in the administration that ended up moving on, and it, it's a tragedy because those were a lot of good people. And I feel horrible that I had my part in it, but it, everybody just said, wait a minute, just relax. What happened here? There was no evil doing. And, uh, but at the end of the day, again, we all learn. You learn and, and you won this, in, this lawsuit. I mean, it's very hard to beat the NCAA in court. Right. Uh, you, and Washington was also um, the defendant. They had to pay you a severance. That was part of your contract that they initially had to deny you. The, the memo came out. Um, one of the main guys at the NCAA was moved to a different job. I think he's still there. I mean, it was, a, talk about a slam dunk of a win. And I'm just curious, after all these years, if you feel like people really know that that happened, or is it just no. mostly... No, the it, first part. It, 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 you say as a slam dunk of a win. It might be in legal terms, right. but it was a loss because it cost me five years of doing what I love to do, which is coach college football. So to wrap things up then, Rick, so many of the stories that I read about you to prepare for this interview talked about how young you were. He's the kid. Well, guess what, pal? <laughs> guess what, pal? <laughs> Ain't so true anymore. Yeah. You're 52, and uh, your youngest son is a senior now in high school, so you're one year away from an empty nest. Take stock. Is this is a rite, rite of passage for you here before you, you know, next I, phase I, in your life? I, I've always considered the glass as half full rather than half empty, and uh, my wife and I are... are ready, I guess, to be empty nesters. Uh, we're not looking forward to it, I would say, but uh, we've been very, very lucky. I've been in some terrific places, coached a bunch of terrific kids, worked with a bunch of great guys as fellow coaches, and uh, I'm also enjoying this broadcasting stuff. I get to tell the stories that uh, have too often gone untold uh, about student athletes and what they're pursuing and so forth. So I, I, I'm one of the lucky ones. Uh, who knows what lurks out there ahead, but uh, whatever it'll be, we'll make it, uh, we'll make it very good. On the next episode of the Seth Davis Show, presented by Cadillac, Campus Insiders welcomes two-time NBA champion and former Arizona Wildcat, Luke Walton. Lute Olson, Phil Jackson, John Wood. What's the common thread between those three men? They have a special quality and a special ability to get their players to play the best and to do it for the, the better of the team as opposed to for individual reasons.